This is part one of a series of videos I'm going to put together to show you how I build a do-it-yourself Cree 3 watt LED lighting system for a reef tank. Now an important thing I want to mention is that you're going to need to be experienced both mechanically and electronically or at least have some friends that are experienced in those areas to help you out if you're going to tackle this project. Otherwise, if you don't have any friends that can help you out and you're not experienced in those areas, you may want to consider an already built LED lighting system like I have over my frag tank here. The reason that I say this is that this is going to be a somewhat advanced project and it's also going to cost a little bit of money. And you can make a simple mistake that ends up being a costly mistake at the flick of a switch. Now the light that I'm going to show you is one that I'm going to be putting over my 90 gallon tank here and replacing the T5 lights that I have on it right now. So let's take a look at that light. So this is the lighting system that I put together for my 90 gallon. Uh, it consists of 40 uh, blue Cree LEDs and those are a mix of both royal blue and the regular blue. And then I have 20 of the white Cree LEDs, which are wired with the red wires here. Uh, those are a mix of the cool white and warm white. Uh, all the LEDs are attached to two aluminum heat sinks here. Each one of these heat sinks measures 8.5 inches by 16 inches. And then I welded the two heat sinks together using this uh, aluminum uh, angle pieces here and a piece of aluminum diamond plate in the middle. You don't have to do something this fancy, but this is how I wanted to put together uh, the, the light system for my tank. Uh, all of the uh, electrical components are inside this box. Uh, I am using Meanwell uh, 6048D, which are the dimmable drivers. And each one of them are adjusted right here using these potentiometers. Uh, this one here is for the center blues. We got the whites in the middle and then the outer blues here. Uh, an optional thing that I have on here are these meters so I can monitor uh, how much power is being sent to uh, each string of the LEDs. So before I turn this on, I gotta give a shout out here to my subscriber Greg in Ohio. He put together on his engraving machine this awesome plaque, uh, Limpet's Reef. I'm going to be hanging it proudly in my fish room here. So a big thank you to, uh, to Greg in Ohio for sending that to me. That's really awesome of you. So I'm now going to go ahead and uh, turn on the LEDs to show you just how intensely uh, bright they get. I'm going to start by turning up the centers and the outer blues and then turn on the whites here. Now as you see it right now, this is the absolute lowest power setting that these LEDs will run at. So I'm going to turn them up now to 100% uh, power, starting with the blues first and then the whites. And as you can see, this is uh, very intense light. Uh, it easily will replace two 250 watt metal halite bulbs or eight uh, overdriven T5 lights. I'm going to turn these down a little bit because it's really bright in here. Some of the advantages of using LEDs over T5 and metal halides is that they run much more efficiently than metal halides or T5s, which means that your electric bill uh, will be less than if you were to run T5s or metal halides. A couple other advantages of using LEDs over T5 and metal halide is that they create uh, considerably less heat than metal halides and T5s do. And also the uh, lifespan of the LEDs is anywhere between 7 to 10 years, which means that you don't have to replace the LEDs on a yearly basis like you do with metal halite or uh, T5. Now I know that 7 to 10 years is quite a big stretch there, uh, but the reason that I say that is that if you run the LEDs at a lower intensity, kind of like what I have right here, uh, they will last much longer than if you have them running at 100% such as this. Running at 100% these LEDs will last 7 years before they have to be replaced. So here are the majority of the items that you will be needing for a build uh, to do your own LED light system. 
Some of them are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll kind of go through them anyways. Some wire nuts, some flux core solder, uh, fuse holder and quick blow fuses, an aluminum heat sink, as fins on one side here. Uh, this is used to dissipate any heat that the LEDs make. 18 gauge stranded wire. I like to just use red and black. There's other colors available. Uh, this is an optional item. This is a multi wire or multi conductor uh, cable for connecting the heat sink to the project box. Uh, you don't have to use this, but this is nice and uh, neat when you're all done with it. Has four wires inside, and then it's uh, wrapped. Makes it look nice and neat. A project box. Uh, obviously, this is the one I've already put together, but uh, the ones that uh, you see at the home improvement stores are gray in color. Uh, they're also called uh, electrical enclosures. Some thermal grease. And these are our Cree LEDs. These happen to be uh, Royal Blue XPEs. And this is how they come when you order them. They're all attached onto a tree, but they uh, have little slots in here so you can just uh, break them off of the tree. Uh, some nylon uh, three millimeter uh, screws. These are metric. Uh, some 10K potentiometers and an adjustment knob if you're going to be using dimmable drivers. And these are the two drivers I'm going to be using on this project. Uh, these are 3048Ds because I'm not going to be using as many LEDs as I did uh, on the other light setup. A 10 volt DC uh, power supply and an electrical cord. Um, you're going to need one uh, per driver and then some uh, connectors to go into your project box here that the cord uh, runs through uh, to secure the cord to the box. So that pretty much covers the items that you'll need. Like I said, if there are some that uh, I missed, I will discuss them uh, in future videos here. Now let's go through some of the tools that you'll be needing. So here are some of the tools that you'll be needing for the LED build. Uh, first thing would be a soldering iron. Now you can buy a basic one like this, or if you're going to be doing a lot of soldering like I do, uh, buying one of these higher powered uh, base units like this will save you a lot of time, works very efficiently. A drill, either cordless or corded, doesn't really matter. A thin black magic marker, a center punch, drill and tap if you are going to be using nylon screws to attach the LEDs to the heat sink. They also make a product out there called Thermo Epoxy, which is a two-part epoxy that you can actually epoxy the LEDs to the heat sink. But I prefer to drill and tap uh, my LEDs to the heat and attach them to the heat sink that way with nylon screws. That way, if one burns out or I want to change the color combination, I can easily do so. A straight edge of some sort. A screwdriver set and a wire cutter and stripper crimper and the last item would be a uh, electrical uh, meter here for testing your voltages and so on. So that covers the tools that we'll be using for this build. On the next installment I'm going to show you the preparation of the LEDs the preparation of the aluminum heat sink and the attachment of the LEDs to the heat sink and also the wiring up of the LEDs to each other. So until next time, happy reefing.